This is the first episode of CSC 1001 past exam review questions. So, this episode we're going to be covering expressions. If you have a look on past papers, there's always a few of these at the beginning of the exam. They start off quite easy with a what does 4 plus 5 divide by 2? And then you just put in your answer. Uh, do these yourself. Put them in idle, see what happens. I'm going to be looking at the slightly di more difficult or non-straightforward ones that might take a second or two to think about. So let's get stuck into it. So let's do 2018, semester one, question four. First question we'll be covering is what does this expression uh, one, two, three evaluate, uh, one plus two plus three evaluates two. So immediately you might be going, cool, one plus two plus three, one plus two plus three equals six, right? Have a notice here, I have just the integer 1, but in the question, I have a comma here, right? It's very different. So here is an integer, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and this 2 comma and 3 comma is actually a tuple. So if we put the brackets in, it pretty much looks like one a tuple, the tuple of one thing, plus a second tuple, plus a third tuple. Right? So what would this evaluate to? It would evaluate to C. I'm going to quickly jump on to idle and hopefully explain this a little better. So let's get up idle. So if you might not have noticed, if you just do brackets 1, right, this gives you a tuple of one thing. Same if I put multiple things in there, right? However, though, Python's smart enough that if you don't put the brackets in, it will automatically assume it's a tuple, right? So x equals 1 comma, all right? We have to look at x. What type is it? It's a tuple. So this is just something you just got to get your head around, make sure you know it exists. And with all these kinds of questions, you can always put them in idle. Okay, let's do question six now from the same exam. What does the result one is less than two and not two is greater than three? Have it a try out of yourself, break down the statement, see what each part is saying, and then pause video. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and had a go. So some key things to note is whenever you see and, right, that means for this statement to be true, this needs to be true. I'm putting a T for true because I'm lazy, and this needs to be true. This is the only way this statement can be true, right? So if you got true and false, this is going to give you false, right? Okay, we have another one, which is or. That's not in this question, but I'll cover it at the same time. So with or, it's either one of these can be true. So for example, true, true will give you true. True or false will give you true, right? Or false or true. Right, as long as one of these are true. The only one that will give you false is false or false. Because there is no true there, it will give you false. Right? That's all it really does that we need to cover. I'm going to just minimize that. So hopefully if you guys need it for later, it's in the corner. But if not, just pause the video. So let's have a look at the statement. First, we need to break it down. How do we do it? So first, we'll look at these, uh, what you call it, the things that are beside each and, right? Because here, with this and that we're looking at over here, we had to look on the left thing and the right thing of the and. So let's do that. So we've got one is less than two. But that's true, right? And not two is greater than three. So what not does is, well, let's have a look at, 2 is greater than 3. 2 is greater than 3. False. Right? This little bit here. Not flips it. So not false is true. And not true is false. So this gives you a true. True and true. Well, this gives you true. Right? If we have a look here, true and true equals true. So the answer is B. Test out. See how it goes. Fiddle with these. What happens if you put brackets in somewhere where what have where you would put ands and ors in the same statement 
have a go at it. There's usually one or two kind of these questions. Okay. Question 2018, semester 1, question 10. What does the following expression here, A, B, C, plus D, E, F, plus G, H, I, and then you get the tooth thing from that thing. Right? So we read left to right in Python. So let's have a look. A plus uh, A, B, C, plus D, E, F, plus G, H, I. Be careful, right? In question four in a that we just covered, we were dealing with tuples, right? Because you had those commas in there. Here we have brackets, but realistically, if you look here, it's just strings being added together. There's no commas, right? We just bod mass, we do this addition of strings first, and then we get the tooth thing from it, right? So A, B, C plus D, E, F, just simple string addition, G, H, I. That's our string, and we get this tooth thing from it. So, zero indexing, zero, one, two. Answer should be C, right? I'm going to divide, divert from the question here. I'll just change pens so it's easier to understand. Okay, what happens if there was no brackets here, right? If there was no brackets, so we got rid of these, what will happen? We read left to right. So, A, B, C plus D, E, F. Right? And then we have a look at this expression. We get the tooth thing from G, H, I. So, that's I. And we add that together. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, I. Hopefully, that's clarified. Again, test it out. See how it goes. Last question. 2018, semester 1. Question 11. Okay, this was pretty easy. Try and pause the pause the video, see what you get, come back. Okay, let's have a look at this. In your exam, you'll need to know basic uh, functions that are built in. For example, input and a bunch of like string ones like dot .split, dot .strip, lists like dot .pop, dot .append, dot .extend, all those kinds of things. One of these are input. Uh, Good way to know is basically if we cover them in your assignment or in your lectures, you'll probably need to know them. So x equals this, y equals this, and you print this. And it just goes, what does the output? So what's this basically what does this print statement give us? Let me go to a bigger pen. Alright. Answer assume you input two in here and input five in here, right? So if we go line by line, x equals two, what's the type of input? that input returns, right? We put two in there, but input gives us back a string, right? Y equals a string of five. You just need to remember what inputs and outputs does this function gives you, right? So input gives you a string back. So print X plus Y equals, and then we get this bit, right? In to out. So X plus Y, because they're both strings, it'll give you back a string of 25 and you add those two strings together this is what it'll print to you the answer is b All right so hopefully this has helped cover some of the questions you'll see in your exam highlight the difficult difficult and different types of tricks we do right all you really need you need to do is stop think about what the question is asking you break it down whether that be what does this function give me back uh, read left to right, what does this and not break it down into sections, so the left bit of and and the right bit of and. And again, we sometimes might fiddle with the types, right? So immediately in the Russian exam, you might not have seen this comma in from one comma plus two comma plus three comma. And same, you might have been going, oh, well, in question 10, oh, it's tuples, right? Because there's brackets there, it has to be, right? No, well, they're actually just string addition. So those would be my key tips for these kinds of questions. Easy marks if you can do a lot of practice, but also quick marks as well. You'll notice some of the later questions are time sinks, like the loop questions. These are where you can save your time, right? If finding, adding the string of two and adding the string of five is not hard, right? It gives you two and five, 25. But you just gotta know well enough that input gives you back a string. Hopefully that's helped. Good luck. Um, see you in the next episode.